Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. UK strain of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. This story takes the lead in our 1037th edition of Caribbean Perspective for Wednesday, 27th January 2021. Details after this break. Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the Food Fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The Food Fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or thefoodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. Welcome back. The UK variant of the COVID-19 virus has been confirmed in St. Lucia. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmont george broke the news on Monday. Gina Felipe of HTS News Force reports. Some St. Lucians are still failing to comply with protocols and are hosting parties despite the ban on social activities. President of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, SLMDA, Dr. Mill Clark, made this disclosure in a statement on the UK COVID-19 strain in St. Lucia. The government has banned the sale of liquor and suspended social gatherings in an attempt to slow the spread of the virus. Dr. Clark says the world is at a critical juncture in the COVID-19 fight and the onus is on everyone to step up to the plate and follow protocols. Because up to this weekend, there were parties which were being held. We did not think certainly that we would have to be telling solutions that if a patient has tested positive for COVID-19 and that patient is in isolation, that they shouldn't be having visits. So these are the, the bits of information that has been received by the epidi- epidemiology department and by our members that have to be dealt with. So a lot more public education is necessary and we understand that as to how um, COVID-19 spreads that we need to do the measures that we know have been proven um, to work. The Health Ministry is currently experiencing a delay in releasing COVID-19 PCR test results due to a sharp increase in cases. Dr. Clark proposes the usage of effective rapid tests for the quick turnaround of results. For every patient, you have to look at the contacts and with the unprecedented surge that we have, it's significant the number of contacts that are having to be looked at. So I think at this juncture, we do believe that rapid testing absolutely has a place. The WHO, PAHO, and all the reputable agencies are saying that it has a place. Of course, the test that is being used has to be looked at, and these things have to be vetted carefully because, again, we're looking at the lives, people's lives, and the survival of us as a country. But there is a place for rapid testing once once it is used judiciously and within reason. Was it a matter of time before someone in St. Lucia tested positive for the SARS-CoV-2 British variant? The SLMDA believes so. To us in the medical fraternity, it doesn't necessarily come as a surprise. It really was inevitable, in a sense. This variant has been in circulation um, since September of last year. Of course, the question remains, why did we not shut our borders to the UK? And these things were discussed widely um, on many levels. The reality is the main public health agencies did not necessarily advise it. Now, you would see that there are some countries that did close their borders to the UK. I think off the top of my head, um, Grenada opted to close its borders to the UK. Uh, I'm not sure if Jamaica as well. And those were decisions made by individual um, countries. The variant, what has been reported of it, is that it certainly is more, in, the infectivity rate is high. The viral load that patients seem to have is higher. The president of the SLMDA urges St. Solutions to restrict their movement. She says if there is no movement, the virus does not spread. 
Other protocols to curtail transmission of COVID-19 include organizations and businesses are to implement a blended services or operations approach and a complete move to staff and board meetings being held virtually or online where possible is recommended. Businesses are to be completely shut down and dismiss staff by 9 p.m. All daily, regular church and religious services limited to 25 people. Special religious rites, including weddings and funerals, are limited to 10 people. Food establishments are restricted to takeaway services. And all non-contact and contact sporting activities, inclusive of indoor and outdoor trainings, local competitions, gym workouts, or social activities, are prohibited. Gina Filippi, HTS News Force. In other news, Trinidad and Tobago's ruling party, People's National Movement, PNM, lost significant ground in Tobago House of Assembly THA polls and also lost one seat in Trinidad by elections. The PNM lost a handful of seats to the Progressive Democratic Patriots, PDP, and tied with the Watson Duke Party for control of the THA. And the PNM also lost the Arima Central District to the United National Congress, UNC, in Monday's local government by elections. Prime Minister Keith Rowley, who was in Tobago on Sunday night, didn't address supporters of the media. Instead, Tobago PNM Council leader Tracy Davidson Celestine, speaking at 10.10 p.m., announced the outcome of Monday's elections. The PNM has retained six seats, and we congratulate all candidates. The outcome is not one we are quite satisfied with, but at this point, we are still thankful, she said. Davidson Celestine said the election had not yet been declared, but the results were trending in the 6-6 direction. We have to wait to see what direction the 6-6 will take us, she said. During the campaign, the PNM had asked Tobagonians to give the party a birthday gift by voting for them in Monday's election, one day after the party celebrated its 65th anniversary on Sunday. An ecstatic PDP leader, Farley Augustine, who was in a Roxborough motorcade celebrating at 10.15 p.m. said, We're elated. We have tied. We knew that NACTA poll, which claimed PNM would have won, was bogus all the time. This is a new day. Augustine said the law is silent on how control of the THA would be worked out if there was a tied result. We don't know at this point what may take place, he added. The law indicates that assemblymen have to get together to choose a chief secretary. Yesterday's 11th THA election to fill 12 seats was a tight, hard race between the PNM and the PDP. The PDP had an arrangement with the Tobago Forwards and several of the new seats the party took from PNM were in areas which traditionally were anti-PNM. In the last term, the PNM held 10 of the 12 THA seats, while the PDP held two seats in Tobago East Districts. On Monday, the PDP took four more seats, which PNM had held, ending up with six seats. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service swooped down on a popular Port of Spain nightclub and charged 96 attendees including people from upscale areas, foreigners and children of well-known families. Irvashi Tawari Rupnarayan of TV6 News reports. Are you feeling the feeling? Well, over 100 persons caught the carnival jumbie last night at the residence nightclub. They gave ecstatics hit footsteps on the ground a whole different meaning when officers of the TTPS swooped down on the establishment where alcohol appeared to be on display. The TTPS says all patrons, the manager and employees will be charged by summons for breaches of the public health ordinance regulations. Eight persons, the TTPS says, will be charged for hosting a public party or public fete and selling or serving alcohol to customers. 96 for exceeding the number of persons permitted in a public place. Three Venezuelan women who are in the country illegally were also detained and the TTPS say they will be handed over to immigration authorities. On Sunday, both doors were blocked by officers and they were able to capture persons who they say live in upscale areas of North Trinidad, 
are foreigners and are children of well-known families. They were all placed in the detention bus and taken to the St. James Police Station. Gunfire on the streets of St. James early this morning and when the smoke clears, two men are lying on the pavement dead. They are Tebow Welsh, a resident of Sandy Grandy, and Siobhan Williams from Waterhole, Coco Reed. The deadly shooting occurred at Bourne's Road shortly after midnight near standby power. Police say they responded to reports that two men will lie motionless following a volley of gunshots around 12.15 a.m. On arrival, officers spoke with a security from SWAT who was on duty at standby power. He told officers he heard gunshots and later found the bodies of the victims. A 27-year-old laborer of Friendship Village, San Fernando, appeared virtually before a Princess Town magistrate charged with four counts of larceny of motor vehicle. Narzajin Suku pleaded not guilty to the charges and was granted bail in a sum of $250,000. The charges arose out of an incident last Tuesday when a Toyota Aqua motor vehicle reported stolen was recovered intact on the same date. The man was questioned and charged in connection with the larceny of two other Toyota Aqua motor vehicles and a Toyota Axio motor vehicle. Rubnarain, TV6 News. Guyana is exploring additional facilities for the COVID vaccine. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana reports. Guyana intends to continue working with the COVAX facility to access the coronavirus vaccine, even as it examines the possibility of looking to other avenues to get additional shots. According to Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony, the country's main focus right now will continue to be to work with the COVAX initiative. So there are several options that are available and um, we are still working with uh, COVAX to ensure that we can have access to vaccine. COVAX is an initiative that falls under the United Nations which seeks to procure and distribute the COVID-19 vaccines to developing and lesser developed countries. COVAX has already made moves to procure up to 1 billion doses, but countries will only be given enough vaccines to cover 20% of their population. That system has forced many countries to begin looking at alternative sources for the vaccines and enter into bilateral arrangements. For Guyana, the vaccines are likely to be available after April, with healthcare workers in the front line and the elderly likely to be given first preference. Countries, uh, we know of countries that have been doing bilateral deals outside of COVAX, and that is because for this year, COVAX would only be able to give uh, the countries who are participating in that facility 20% of the vaccine that they require for their population, or vaccines to cover 20% of their population. So that is not going to be enough for a country to achieve herd immunity. And therefore, a number of countries are looking at other options of how to get additional vaccines so that they can have more people immunized. Um, for us, we continue to work with COVAX while we explore uh, with other partners to see whether or not we can access um, vaccines so that we can have more in country. But it's, it's a, our main focus is really COVAX. The coronavirus cases in Guyana continue to spread. Based on the latest figures coming out of the Ministry of Health, 19 new cases have been recorded over the past 24 hours. There are now six persons in the COVID-19 intensive care unit. Since the first case was recorded back in March last year, almost 7,000 cases have been recorded, with more than 6,000 persons making full recoveries in Guyana. Since the start of this year, more than 500 new cases have already been recorded in the past two weeks. Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the Food Fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The Food Fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or thefoodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.